championship night here in Pittsburgh. Our fourth weight class of the evening, the sophomore from Cornell, Yanni Diakamahalis, a champion a year ago, did it with a torn ACL. He squares off against Joey McKenna out of Ohio State. Three-time All-American and a first-time finalist. 330 wrestlers come here to Pittsburgh. Just 10 emerge as champions. Many paths and one final destination for these young men, and it's the sport's finest night. Mike Cousins, Hall of Famer Tim Johnson, national champion Anthony Robles, Quinn Kesnick, Billy Baldwin, and we're glad to have you here with us this evening. This is important for McKenna right here to get his shot early, cover it, and get the takedown. Because last time, Diakka Mahalis got two early takedowns to take the lead and got a second takedown in the second period. So this is huge for McKenna, who's wrestling the best he's ever wrestled. That's what you want to be. You want to be the best version of yourself when you get to the NCAAs, and very few are. There's a terrific takedown there by McKenna. Quick and clean. That's what you have to do against Yanni because somehow Yanni can figure out how to use his opponent's attacks against them. So way to go there by McKenna. Fast finish. You're correct there, Anthony. Yanni Yakmahalis might be the most technically sound wrestler all the way around of anybody in this field. With McKenna wrestling his best. The Buckeye in the gray singlet. Bonused his way into the semis, a tech fall, a couple major decisions. Got a high crotch takedown in the third for a 4-3 win over Nick Lee of Penn State to face the defending champ, Diaco Mahalis. Yanni took a standout high school career, four New York State championships, one of seven at the time. His younger brother just got his fourth as well, Greg, who's a junior. And last year, the championship over Bryce Meredith. Both these wrestlers have much higher aspirations than right here in college, post-collegiate. They'll be uh, representing the USA. They have at their age levels. McKenna winning the US Open last year as a collegian. Easy set up. You got to set up, gentlemen. One minute. One minute. McKenna started his college career at Stanford. Two-time Pac-12 champion. Was their first freshman All-American. The, the New Jersey native wanted to be closer to home and has found a good one in Columbus. A shot there by McKenna. That's one of his go-to attacks. The head inside left single. And Yanni was able to spread him out. He's attacking that far ankle there. This is where Yanni can be dangerous. If he can turn that corner to the left side, he's so flexible. Throughout this tournament, he's scored quite a bit in this position. Yeah, you're right. One of the best at turning your attacks into his points. So again, nice job by McKenna because Diakama Hollis is so good at turning shots into his points. And out of bounds, out of bounds, out of bounds. So a stoppage with blood We're up here. on McKenna's okay. cheek. And there in the corner, of course, Kyle Dake, the four-time NCAA champion. What an influence the Akamahalas' life. But uh, Yanni says, the guy there in the left with the beard, Mike Gray, former All-American for Cornell, he, said, he says, I'm a product of Mike Gray and his investment into me. And it's clear with the way that staff is structured, all alums both assistant coaches and the volunteer spot, former Cornell wrestlers. To the left side. Yep. Ten, Ten. seconds. Five seconds. Four. Three, three, two, one. After three minutes, it's McKenna up two to one over Diaco Mahalis. McKenna Choice. in his first finals two times has finished third, both in 2016 and last year. Tom Ryan, what a job he has done at Ohio State, winning a national title in 2015, and really being the uh, team that has challenged Penn State, the only team that has really challenged uh, Penn State during their dynastic run. Tom Ryan talked about uh, the importance of uh, McKenna trusting his preparation and competing at your best. And, Talks about positive infinity. 
Okay, clean start, just like last Tremendous time. coach and a here. tremendous job since coming over from Hofstra and Good turning set. Ohio State into oh, a Connor. national powerhouse. And they're going to be moving oh. into a new facility here in a couple of months. It'll be one of the best in the country. And McKenna, talk about aspirations off the mat. Studying construction management has been interning with a construction company building their new facility. And his dad, Jimmy, is the CEO, runs a construction company downtown Manhattan, so he comes by that honestly. There's Jimmy in the Ohio State sweatshirt on the right. And he's hoping that uh, his son can construct a championship here tonight. Kenna slips away, up three to one. But Anthony, like you said, Diakama Hollis, his speed, his flexibility, can score in a flurry. He definitely can, but I'm impressed with McKenna so far. He's getting on his shots. When he's not able to finish them, he's getting those stalemate positions. He's wrestling extremely smart right now, and really, Yanni, those counterattacks that Yanni does have, they're not playing a factor just yet. What I'm impressed about with McKenna here is he's uh, soaking in the moment, and it's not too big for him. First time on this stage, and he's got plenty of uh, plenty of energy left here. Not shooting it too many times. He got what he wanted with that first takedown. But he's very strategic and has really slowed Diakam Hollis down. Walk through that, walk through that, gentlemen. Which is not proven easy to do. Yanni got a win over Dom Demas of Oklahoma, 5-1. Fairly pedestrian in the quarterfinals and then in the semifinals, avenged the only loss of his college career against Missouri's Jaden Ironman. One that he said stuck with him for quite some time. Terrific job there by McKenna, where they're in the storm of Yanni's shots. Good head hands defense there. Every time Yanni shot, McKenna got down. See McKenna's here on his leg, reattack. Yanni steps over. No points. No points. Tremendous awareness by McKenna on rolling through. And evading danger. The challenge brick comes from the Cornell corner. They've got three challenges coming into the final, so why not throw it there and see if they can get some points? Obviously challenging that that was a takedown. Whether or not there was the swipes for a back point is really irrelevant right now. But if it was a takedown, I also think there were swipes. Just watch it in regular time. Yeah. Nice tip here, drive through, and the, he put up the two. The referee put up the two and then waved it off, and McKenna could make a case for continuation. You see McKenna, his go-to shot, left side, head inside single. Yanni turns it against him right here, steps over. It's proven he's dangerous from all positions. Let's watch it in regular time. The officials tonight seeing the same video that oh, you do at home. You do, you do that for me? The challenge comes from Barney, Cornell for a takedown that would regular even it at three. Turn in on that single leg. Trying to finish it. Here's where Yanni turns him over. Steps over the leg. It looked like Yanni almost had him in danger with that step over, but... You know, that could have gone either way. It was called, no takedown. It was not going to be reversed. If they had called it to, I could see it happening, but it could have gone either way. So back to it in the second. 12 seconds. Pressure in, pressure in. Four, three, two... One time. Right. 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 Yanni's mom, Gina. Anthony, your point about McKenna needing to finish crisply, clean, fast.
he didn't at that time, and that's what almost got him in oh. trouble there. Yanni, the best at turning your attack into his points, and he almost did. And so McKenna dodges a bullet there, wrestling a masterful match so far, except for that, and he gets out without no without any points against him there. He definitely dodged a bullet, but what was crucial there for McKenna as he wrestled through the position. That's what Yanni does so well. Usually against his opponents, Yanni's the one that finishes the position there. McKenna instead finished it. That's why he wasn't awarded the points. Does get the escape point, 3-2. Back to their feet, 90 seconds left. Diaco Mahalis looking for his second straight title. Kind of working that two on one. He's got to use this to his advantage. Circle back into the mat. Keep that tie. McKenna vying for his first title. Stall warning on McKenna. McKenna needs to circle in. He cannot afford to be backed up. Again, nice job. A little misdirection shot. Don't ever count out Yanni. Bianca Mahalis last year, national champion as a true freshman. Terrific job there by McKenna, shooting off the whistle, head inside single to the left side. Again, his go-to, Yanni's trying to take that corner. Great job, McKenna here, circling, trying to square up. He's trying to go out the back door, but Yanni's reaching over the top. Scramble for position down to 15 seconds. And there's two. Two seconds. And one. Oh my goodness. Tom Ryan there is going to throw the challenge and say that wasn't two. Again, a little continuation going on, but they're not going to overturn this either. Why do you feel that's the case? Does it look like he had two, even though you could have called it no two because of the uh, arm up there holding on on the underhook. But watch this here. As he comes through. Now what they're calling for here is they wanted a danger zone count. Now he steps in right there. And Tom Ryan's going to say, that underhook, no, no points. Stepping over. Yeah, and the step over is deceiving, isn't it? Because where's two? So you're okay with Did you see two, two Anthony? I didn't see two. We're good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Call's confirmed. Call's confirmed. After further review, the call is confirmed. We have two takedown, one escape. Not many are reversed. But McKenna with just three seconds left, squirming away to get the one on the escape, even it at four, and send it to seven victory. So McKenna had, he, he got the one escape there, according to the officials, after they gave the two. So it's all tied up, we go to sudden victory. the underhook back to the feet. Same position here. Fighting for it, a championship on the line. Advantage, Yanni. Inside 20 seconds, Yanni, yes! He does it again!
it's with good reason many point to him as one of the youngest brightest faces in college wrestling a two time champ in as many years. That's why I said you never count him out. McKenna wrestled, like I said, a masterful, great match. Yanni comes out on top. He's with Quinn. That was something else. Reviews, controversy. Take me back to the beginning, actually. Joey scored the first two. What's going on in your mind down two to one? I knew he was going to come out hard and score the first takedown. And I knew I was in better shape and that he didn't want to wrestle the whole match. I had to be ready to wrestle the whole time as hard as I could. You were up against it late, though. You managed to score. How'd you do it? Tenacity. Never giving up, trusting myself, and just being creative in my scores. You turn to Coach Cole. You turn to Kyle Dake after the match. What are you telling them? I'm the baddest dude on this earth. Before the match, there's no one who is more confident in me than those dudes in my corner. You're the baddest what? Baddest dude in the world. <laughs> Congratulations, Johnny. Ten wrestlers came into this tournament without a loss on their record this season, and Diaka Mahalis will be at least one of them to leave perfect from Pittsburgh.